Good day everyone, my name is Dr. Boggs Rivera, member of the Rotary Club of Manila South and a radiation oncologist by profession. I'd like to share you a project that helps save thousands of women in my country from cervical cancer. Part necessity of this project is to share the awareness to a large scale of women nationwide. And for that, we wanted to attempt to break Guinness Book Record this May 2024 in line with the Philippine National Cervical Cancer Month. Overall, what we aim to attain is to be a united for a cervical cancer-free Philippines. But what first is our current cervical cancer condition in our country? Worldwide, cervical cancer is the fourth most common in women. In the Philippines, it's the second most common. The incidence of cervical cancer in the Philippines is nearly 8,000 annually with mortality rate more than half. Roughly, we can assume about 11 to 12 women die with this disease each day. Yet, cervical cancer is one of the most preventable form of cancer. And it's one of two cancer that can be eliminated. The one being hepatocellular carcinoma or liver cancer eliminated through hepatitis B vaccination. Now, there is a difference between eradication campaign and elimination campaigns. Eradication, like in ending polio, means complete reduction in worldwide cases where elimination campaign, on the other hand, like cervical cancer, means fewer to four per 100,000 cases per year worldwide. Currently, the incidence per 100,000 population in the Philippines is 14.5. Australia, on the other hand, is currently fewer than six and it's on its way to become the first country in the world to eliminate this disease in our lifetime, estimated between 2028 to 2035. To eliminate cervical cancer, the World Health Organization requests each country to achieve the 90-70-90 targets set by 2030. Let's watch this video from the World Health Organization. In May 2018, we issued a call to action to eliminate cervical cancer. No woman should suffer from a deadly disease that's both preventable and curable. The inequity is especially acute in vulnerable communities and in developing countries where the burden is greatest. At the direction of WHO's member states, we mobilized with countries, partners, experts and advocates to develop a global strategy for elimination, which was adopted by the 73rd World Health Assembly. To set countries on the path towards elimination, by the year 2030, we must aim to achieve the 90, 70, 90 targets. 90% 90 of girls to be fully vaccinated with the HPV vaccine by age 15. 70% of women to be screened at least twice with a high performance test. 90% of women with pre-cancer or cancer to receive the appropriate care and treatment, including palliative care. We believe that all countries can achieve these ambitious goals. Please join us in the fight to end the inequity and to restore women's dignity. Together, Together we, we can, can eliminate, eliminate cervical cancer. cancer. Again, a summary of the 90-70-90. The World Health Organization calls us to achieve this by 2030. If cervical cancer can be prevented and eliminated, then why do you think there are so many women dying of cervical cancer in the Philippines? What could be the reason and how do we react as stakeholders? In a report made by the World Health Organization in 2020, the Philippine HPV vaccination coverage is 23% first dose, 5% second dose in children 14 years and below. Remember, World Health Organization suggests attaining 90% population-based target. For cervical cancer screening, on the other hand, the World Health Organization seeks to get 70% of the women population screened by age 30 to 49. 
In the Philippines, a dismal 1% of women attends to cervical cancer screening. This finding is one solid evidence why women are dying from cervical cancer in our country. I borrowed this slide from the Department of Health, which showed HPV vaccination delivery. When they started in 2015, first dose was highest at 358,870 and 252,774 complete dose in 2016. As years moved, the vaccination decreased to 43,949 first dose and 4,318 only second dose in 2022. Just how big is the population that requires vaccination so that we could understand the bigger picture? If we are just targeting the 10 to 14-year-old female cohorts for 2023, that is around 5,296,864. The decreasing vaccination was said to bring vaccine hesitancy due to the Dengvaxia issue, which was launched in 2016, but the drug Dengvaxia was banned in by 2018. Other factors include disruption of school services and the limited service delivery during COVID-19. This year, 2023, the Department of Health has purchased 1 million vaccine. I believe we can help them step up the vaccination drive for a better Philippines. And I have just the plan how to deliver it efficiently. I'm showing now on the screen the causes of failures of cervical cancer screening in our country. The slide belongs to the 2023 Philippine OBGYN Society President Dr. Efren Domingo during his presentation last May 2023. Decreased screening utilization is, mainly, is caused by 1 and 2, the lack of knowledge about the symptomatology of cervical cancer and the perception that cancer is fatal and the lack of awareness that cervical cancer is treatable. The truth is, women go seek a doctor when only they feel something wrong about themselves or what we call as reactive medicine. Unfortunately for cervical cancer, when you do this reactive medicine, when you wait for the symptoms to appear, by the time it provides you the symptoms, you are already in the late stages of the disease. And this is what needs to be emphasized, that cervical cancer screening can save lives. If you have no symptoms and get screening today, the worst case you can have is a pre-cancer, meaning it's not yet cancer, but may proceed to become cancer in 5 to 10 years time if you don't do something about it. The cost of treatment is very cheap compared when you wait to get cervical cancer, which is about 300,000 or more. Plus, you're not still sure whether in the next five years you're still alive. So what to do? Get the screening today. Other factors include the lack of facilities, the lack of expertise, the doctors. Now, how can you solve that? Others include patient compliance issues and follow-up. Remember, using a pap test and an a or an HPV DNA test, compliance may become a problem in rural communities. Women need to go get the test, then they have to go back again a week or several weeks later for the results. Other includes the misconception regarding screening and the high out-of-pocket cost. It is unfortunate that the Department of Health does not have the enough budget to spend for screening, as most of the budget are spent on treatment. Let's hear this directly from Dr. John Aurel Laurel Levallado, who is the uh, Cancer Control Division Chief at the Disease Prevention and Control Bureau of the Department of Health. So this is just to show you that um, these two care models are very important with the NICA and the universal health care, but specifically, specifically for us with the screening, I would say general care is more important because, you know, treatment is mahal, screening is more mura, but in reality, yung funds talaga namin is really dedicated to treatment. 
So, isa yun sa dapat namin talagang pag-isipan. And siguro, if you guys will be advocating more budget for the Department of Health, tell the legislators that we really need budget for screening. Now that we understand the problems, let's first understand what screening type should be implemented. Understanding the three proven approaches to screening and determine which method should be pursued given the problems highlighted in the earlier slides. So we have three, the molecular or the HPV DNA testing, cytologic or the pap smear, and the visual inspection or often called VIA or VIA or acetic acid wash test. Molecular or HPV DNA testing is considered the best test in the world, but it's expensive. At 5,600 pesos per patient, we need a higher budget per patient to screen them to attain cervical cancer elimination. This test, along with cytology or pap smear, require twice going back to the medical professional and to attain the result. And patient compliance will be an issue. VIA, however, is good because it's inexpensive and that results are immediate. But reading or evaluation requires mastery or repeated refresher courses. In the Philippine setting, because of the lack of doctors, it is the midwives and the nurses who does this. And so far, it's not much being implemented. This is much likely due to the confidence in the evaluation, whether it's pre-cancer or not, whether it is positive, negative, or suspicious for cancer. Still, Doctors are preferably the best people to make this type of evaluation. But you see, there is a general lack of doctors in the Philippines. And how can you solve that? One solution is the implementation of technology in VIA platform. Here, the midwives takes a photo of the cervix using a device called a colposcope, which is basically used to magnify the cervix. With the images taken, they are sent for artificial intelligence evaluation. So this is an objective finding. Plus, they are now then sent to a doctor for final diagnosis using telediagnosis or something similar to telemedicine. Using this model, screening can be made affordable for as low as 51 pesos per patient. Results acquired immediately and can be downloaded in the cloud at any given time. Each organization can monitor screening activities per day, per month, and review them for years as long as the data are in the cloud. And treatment can be done immediately as colposcopy has already been done. Traditionally, colposcopy is done once a precancer has been suspected after an HPV DNA testing, or a pap smear, or a VIA. Remember, colposcopy are traditionally big equipment. But technology has revolutionized colposcopy today to become portable and to be handy. Furthermore, to make an argument why VIA must be done over other screening tests, visual inspection in the Philippines is the current primary screening modality. Also on this slide shows the dismal 1% of women taking up the screening. And because of this, 11 to 12 women die each day to cervical cancer. I'd like to take time to emphasize the VIA method. In rural communities, what's happening is that it's the midwife and the nurses who does this by placing a speculum, followed by placing acetic acid in the women's cervix. Midwives are then now asked to provide evaluation or diagnosis if it is VIA positive, VIA negative, or suspicious for cancer using the naked eye visually. They typically compare what they saw to a book of samples of what positive looks like, of what VIA positive looks like, or what VIA negative looks like. And then if they see a VIA positive, they illustrate it on a sheet of paper. They draw. And that is passed on to the doctor and ask the patient to go to the regional hospital with the paper. Often, they don't get to see what has happened to the patient and if they made the right diagnosis or not. And this is probably the reason why VIA is not being implemented 
much in the rural communities. Unlike using a colposcope with artificial intelligence, there will be no need for the midwives to draw as taking photo of the cervix stores already the information for years. Objective artificial intelligence evaluation plus the images taken by the midwife will then be forwarded to a medical doctor through internet for final diagnosis. Thus, evaluation now are being passed from, from the midwives to the doctors. In my experience, a doctor can read one patient a minute. Imagine how many patients can be evaluated in eight hours just by one doctor, let alone if she is comfortably working in her home. Once that is done, a report is automatically generated by the software and is sent to the patient's email or social media platform. Using this technology, we may be able to provide same-day results and perhaps soon when we begin to have more experience on this AI evaluation technology, move to a screen and treat on the same day. This addresses the patient's compliance issues. On the issues of the lack of screening facilities and the lack of doctors, now we are getting our midwives' interest back in the equation, thereby increasing screening stakeholders. Accuracy will be good as there it will be artificial intelligence and doctors will read all patient evaluation. Instead of putting up many screening stationary centers and, un and that understanding that screening can be done every three to five to seven years. We could now push for a mobile population-based screening model as this way we can have more expert midwives moving from barangay to barangay at a lesser amount of cost. Now, because they see these cases daily, they become experts. They now can level up to effect treatment of pre-cancer, which is practically allowed. Lastly, because we have a direct midwife to patient connection, vaccination can be introduced by the midwife to the mothers and the mothers to get their children vaccinated by primarily focusing our attention to mothers, providing free screening and education, we complete the cycle of providing vaccination to our children, thereby affecting cervical cancer elimination. What, however, we cannot address by this model is the national interest to eliminate cervical cancer. And this is why we are attempting to beat not just one, but three Guinness Book of World Records to attain national interest. Our objective here is threefold. One is to effect a nationwide cervical cancer elimination initiative, interest, and awareness, to raise fund for screening, as the Department of Health said it already, that they do not have the capacity and funds for screening, and others like vaccination, money to be purchased for machines for thermal ablation, and also money to train stakeholders like midwives and nurses and others. So what records do we need to break? The records we can break include a cervical cancer lesson given to 3,500 participants. I believe we can pull 5, 5 million people during election time. Why not so during a campaign like this that directly helps our wives and daughters? Another record that we can break is the creation of number of ribbons made in an hour. If we have thousands of participants, I'm sure we can create by the hundred thousands of ribbons all for cervical cancer in one hour. The unofficial largest screening record uh, in a day is at 1,960. Our goal is to do a lot more screening as screening is the one that saves lives, not the talk, not the awareness. Imagine the number of women we can save in a day if we can conduct more than 2,000 screening for one day and sustain it. The Guinness organization confirms that the first two we can attempt to break, whereas the cervical cancer screening is an invasive procedure and that Guinness does not monitor or hold such title. But screening 
is the foundation towards the elimination of cervical cancer. And that not only we do the talk, which is the awareness, but more importantly, we must do the walk, which is the cervical cancer screening. But how then can we screen more than 2,000 patients in a day? One survey or one machine to which I have extensive experience can screen at an average of 3 to 5 patients in an hour depending on internet speed. Let's just say if we have 70 survey units to work on 3 patients per hour, we should be finishing about 2,100 patients in 8 hours. But who would conduct such screening? My idea is a healthy competition between LGU and other organization. Do we do it in one big place or do we do it in multiple sites in the country? That decision has to be done in our future talks. To make it more entertaining, we could have prizes for the largest number of screening in one unit in a day, the largest number of screens in a municipality or in a city or in a province and so on and so forth. Since the machine is dependent on the internet, we will make it at such to determine which internet company could provide the fastest and reliable internet in a given area. More competition, remember, can help raise more funds towards cervical cancer prevention. We would also aim for a multitude of stakeholders from different LGO, LGBT organization, medical societies, dental, emergency medical services, midwives, patient support groups, foundation, pharmaceutical industry, governments like LGU, DILG, and DepEd, merchandisers, telco, fraternity organizations that would help us with manpower, and general public, and more importantly, our media partners. But how do we get 70 of these machines for use? The machine has a published price of 600000 but since the Korean company seeks establishment of this, of this product in the Philippines, they are offering it at half the discount, meaning it's being offered at 300,000 pesos for the first 70 units, which will be used for the Guinness Book of World Records. The target users, bottom line, are the LGUs, whom needs to use this and, and bring this in every barangay. If the LGUs don't buy it, as an advocate of this project, my club, the Rotary Club of Manila South, along with our members, past president James Jimenez, together with our incumbent president, attorney Shane Sapon, and more importantly, the support of our immediate past district governor for 3810, Joyce Ambray, the plans which is to take this up to Rotary Clubs internationally and locally with global grant access to get backing on this project. The idea is to, for Rotary to finance the machine, to endorse it to the LGU to conduct the screening, and to maintain the machine. Rotary can monitor the machine daily if it's being used or not, if how many were screening done in a day, in a month, in a week, or in a year. This is because we have access to the cloud where data can be made readily available at any given time. But what pushes the LGU to conduct screening daily? After all, Remember that it's the screening that saves lives. Now, artificial intelligence fees to date and during the previous years were priced at per patient. ADOT, the company manufacturer, is now offering it unlimited, meaning you can screen as many patients as you want for a fixed amount priced at per three months, per six months, per one year. Currently, like I said, we are engaging at 600 pesos screening fee paying for artificial intelligence per patient now the only pricing are as follows 125000 for 3 months 230000 for 6 months and 400000 for a year if your team could screen 30 patients in a day that is monday to friday only not to include saturday and sundays screening cost can go down to as low as 64 pesos per patient imagine how affordable can it go? And now you compare that to pap smear and HPV DNA. Getting the six months package screening can go as low as 59 pesos given the same scenario from the previous slide. And as low as 51 pesos for one year package. 
This will start when we get to the 70 participants. So if you are interested, please email me at servic, C -E -R -V -I -Q, at gmail.com. There is also an annual server fee for participants to pay annually to provide unlimited access and readily download, upload, and for Rotary such as us and other organizations to monitor the LGU's progress. With this, we will have a real-time data of population-based statistics relevant to cervical cancer. We can also do a MOA or a MOU with the LGU as to their service delivery commitment to use the machine as frequent as possible to assure each unit is going to do its share towards a cervical cancer-free Philippines. Again, to reiterate, organizations have the capacity to monitor their corresponding LGU progress at any given time using the cloud server. The Guinness attempt is aimed to be held in May 2025, in time for the celebration of the National Cervical Cancer Awareness Month. Should it be a simultaneous event or a one main big event, still, one main event place has to be in place is a command center or a monitoring center, where a whole day of packets of different lectures can be provided. Lectures including lectures on HPV vaccination, HIV, reproductive health, STD, and others will be featured. But a grand cervical cancer lecture will come at a time when most number of patients are within the area. My role here as an advocate will be in the screening, training, to involve midwives, nurse associations, and training of allied practitioners. Also, the involvement of different doctor specialists for artificial intelligence evaluation, other medical organization, to involve emergency medical service organization and patient organization as well, to include pharmaceutical companies such as MSD and others, and to provide a list of screening requirements, directives, administration, and implementation. The Guinness organization has expressed to us a cost estimate on consultation, which includes priority application, guidelines on question and answer, and the service fee of an official adjudicator coming to the event to present the certificate if we become successful. This does not, however, include the hotel and accommodation expenses and additional license fee of the record holder logo for publication or press release or event videos. As we look to conduct cervical cancer screening nationwide up to areas such as in the mountains to um, our indigenous people brethren, I would like to share the works of Sister and Dr. Eva Fidelis Maamo, who had trained 278 barefoot doctors inside 118 indigenous communities across the Philippines. Barefoot doctors are not actually doctors, but uh, they are trained with basic health knowledge, with task services to prevent or treat uh, serious health conditions that can arise in the community such as tuberculosis, pulmonary diseases, dengue, malaria, and others. We can tap them to address screening in indigenous communities also. The indigenous communities represent about 10 to 20 percent of our total population and training them will bring cervical cancer prevention in the mountains. After all, we need all the help that we can get to achieve 70 percent coverage but just how much women is 70%? If the target population is age 30 to 49, then there is 15.6 million women nationwide. 70% is 11 million screens. That needs to be done every 3 to 7 years. Assuming we can take every 3 years, that is equivalent to 3.7 million screenings per year for a unit that could conduct 30 screenings in a day, we only need 475 units to screen and reach the capacity of 70%. Remember that the Philippines has 145 cities and 1,489 municipalities. If only each city or municipality gets one unit, it can already effectively reach the target and thereby achieving cervical cancer elimination. 
reality. Good day to you and thank you so much for listening. Bye.